ओम शांति टुडे वी आर रिवाइजिंग द मोरी व्हिच वाज स्पोकन ऑन 18th ऑफ मार्च 1971 In this morley, Baba Bab Dada is speaking to all the students, all children who have come in the bhatti, and it looks like it's mostly the teachers. It's the Kumari's bhatti, and Baba is majorly focusing on two powers. the power to accumulate and the power to overcome and baba says both these powers are necessary to become victorious in anything even in a logic or a logic world power to accumulate and power to overcome and then baba has gone into explaining how we can get these powers and enhance them within us baba also says that you have to in order to get these powers in full you have to remove body consciousness and move to soul consciousness and then he says body consciousness means the consciousness of mine this is mine and then he goes on to say that once you remove the consciousness of mine that is when you completely are able to surrender and baba then goes on to say that what surrender means and he goes into the detail of surrendering and comes back to these two powers and how we can reveal baba by imbibing these two powers with us so let's start the morley in order to become victorious the powers to accumulate and overcome are necessary today baba has especially been called for those who are in the bhatti baba is seeing what those who are in the bhatti have imbibed so don't think that baba is only speaking to those who are in the bhatti looking at the time looking at the time of the kalp that we are in we all are in bhatti right at our homes and which is why we are getting up early listening to the avyat morley so baba is speaking to all of us to baba today baba is especially saying the dharna of two things through their corporeal image baba is saying to what extent each of you has imbibed two particular powers according to your cap- capacity see baba is adding according to your capacity what two powers baba is saying one is the power to accumulate and the other is the power overcome and both these powers go hand in hand the power to accumulate is very essential so you have to accumulate in the intellect the dharma that you have been given in this bhakti and by keeping it in the intellect you will be able to attract people i was saying whatever dhanas have been given in this party or by given by baba through the murlis we have to accumulate all of them in our intellect 
right? Sometimes Baba says, you must try to chat, you must tell me what is happening, talk to me, keep me with you wherever you go. All these small, small dhanas that Baba gives, accumulate them in the intellect. And by keeping them in the intellect, you will be able to attract people. Because when we will keep these dharnas in the intellect, then our actions will become more and more and more abhyak. And that is what will attract people. More than the words, it's the actions, it's the behavior. And that can change only when we are able to accumulate in the intellect, the dharna. So Baba says, Therefore, both the powers of accumulating and overcoming are essential. Accumulating the dharna and overcoming the obstacles. Have you imbibed both of these powers? And Baba says both these powers go hand in hand. If you accumulate the dharna, if you accumulate Baba's teachings, Baba's instructions, Baba's Srimad for all of us, we will automatically be able to overcome whatever obstacles come in our way. In fact, the obstacles will not look or seem like obstacles at all. So Baba Singh, have you imbibed both of these powers? If there's anything lacking in either of the two, you cannot be constantly victorious. Ah, if the power to accumulate is lacking, which means that I have not accumulated all the teachings that Baba has given me, then I'm bound to get into waste thoughts sometime or the other. And if the power to overcome is missing, and I'll get beaten up by Maya when it comes up with the obstacles. So Baba goes on to say, to the extent that someone has the power to accumulate, accordingly, he has the power to overcome. They both go hand in hand. You have come to this party to imbibe both these powers. So have you become embodiments of power? What blessings have you received from this party? Okay, so Baba is saying, have you become the embodiments? Now, to become embodiments, what do we need? We need Baba's blessings. So Baba is saying, what blessings have you received? On the path of devotion, people give blessings. May you have children. May you be wealthy. However, what main blessing did you receive from this bhakti? Hmm? Did you just become a teacher or also master bestower of blessings? Hmm? It's just such a big thing. I'm not asking for Baba to bless me. I have received a blessing that I am a master bestower of blessings. One blessing you received was to constantly be full of power. And the second blessing was to constantly remain in the object and stable stage. What are the two blessings? One is to constantly be full of power. And the other is to constantly remain in the object and stable stage. Both those things are merged in these two blessings. Which things? Both the two powers that Baba was talking about earlier, the power to accumulate, and the power to overcome, they are merged in these two blessings. When you're constantly full of power, 
which Baba has said. One blessing is to be constantly full of power. So when you're constantly full of power, you will be able to easily overcome all obstacles. And second blessing, to remain constantly in the abhyakt and stable stage. And when we are constantly in abhyakt and stable stage, we have no waste thoughts and we are able to accumulate whatever Baba wants to tell us, including the touchings that he wants to give us. Right? So these two blessings help us to imbibe those two powers. So Baba goes on to say, you must attain these two blessings, become prosperous through them, and then return home to show your practical proof. Here Baba is talking about returning home to Madhuban. In a corporeal form, he says, you utilize these blessings to become prosperous through them and then return to show your practical proof. Do not think that you are just returning to your home or to your place. Here also Baba is talking about going back home to our logic places. So do not think that you are just returning to your home or to your own place, but you must think that you are going on to the stage of the world. In order to put these blessings you have received into a practical form. Whenever we go on to operate our day to day, we must feel that we are going to perform on the stage of the world. That's what Baba is expecting of us. Now Baba is saying, if you're actors, then he goes on to say, what main aspects do actors pay attention to whilst they are on the stage? What are the two things that actors need to have when they're on stage? Or what are the two things that make a very good actor? So one is attention and accuracy. The two things Baba has said, one is attention and the other is accuracy. The actors, Baba is saying, they remember both these things. You have to be accurate and you have to be always attentive. In the same way, when you are going to reveal Bab Dada by going to act on the stage, you must remember these two things. You must pay attention at every second to every thought. And you must be accurate. You'll all observe that the only way or only path or only door that Maya comes from is through thoughts first, before even coming into action. Maya comes into thoughts. It comes in the form of loose thoughts. It comes in the form of negative thoughts, waste thoughts. So Baba is saying, if you have to pay attention to each thought, is it a waste thought? Is it a powerful thought? Is it a weak thought? Is it a negative thought? And you also must be accurate. Accurate in the sense that whatever action is required for me, from me at that moment, I perform only that action and nothing else. Otherwise, Baba says, you will not be able to play the elevated part of revealing Bhaktada. Baba says, you are actors on the stage of the world drama who have gone there to reveal Bhaktada. And for that, we need to be attentive and accurate. Attentive to every second, at every second, to every thought that I'm generating inside. And then my, in my actions, I must be accurate. In my thoughts, I must be attentive. Only then I will be able to play the elevated part that Baba is expecting of me. 
So Baba says, do you know? Do you now understand why you are going home? You are going to play the part of willing, Baba Dada. You must go from here with this aim. Whatever action you perform, first of all, check whether Baba Dada will be revealed through that action or not. That's a very big responsibility. Whatever action. That's why Baba says it should be accurate. First of all, check whether Baba Dada will be revealed through that action or not. Do not think that you must reveal him only through your words. But you must reveal Baba at every moment through your actions. Baba has said this earlier also, that I will not be revealed through words. I will be revealed through actions. People will say, or the souls will say, that you are different, you are elevated. Who has made all of you like this? How can somebody make all of you like this? Elevated souls, there's something special. And that's how Baba will be revealed. So reveal Baba in such a way that the words emerge from the lips of all souls, that each of you is practically like the Father. Your every action should become a mirror through which they can have a vision of the divine form. And the spirituality of Bhaktada's virtues and task. Such beautiful words Baba is saying for us. He says, your every action should become a mirror through which they can have a vision. My action is a mirror through which they can see the divine form, the deity form, and the spirituality of Bab Dada's virtues. They should be able to see Bab Dada from me. I should become that mirror. However, who will be able to become a mirror? Baba is asking, who all can become a mirror? Only those who not only surrender their thoughts, but also surrender the body consciousness. Every action of those who have surrendered their body consciousness becomes a mirror. When you surrender something that is no longer considered to be your own. So, by surrendering the consciousness of the body, that is, when you finish the consciousness of mind, all the attachments will also finish. I was saying, who can become a mirror? Because mirror needs to be very clean to be able to reflect back, or to be able to see through. So if we need to become mirror of Bhaktata's virtues, then we'll have to surrender our own body consciousness, which is nothing but it makes the mirror dirty. And body consciousness is also the consciousness of mind. Once that goes away, all the attachment will also go away. All the attachment to belongings, attachment to everything that I consider mine. So Baba says, have you surrendered to this extent? What are the signs of those who have surrendered in this way? So what, what are the signs of those who have surrendered? Firstly, they are constantly Yogi. If I have given everything to someone, I will keep remembering that one. Nah? Hey, I've given you everything. So constantly yogi with Baba. And secondly, they are free from bondage. So there are two signs that I have surrendered everything that is mine. One is I will be constantly yogi because there's nothing else to have yoke with. 
I have no bondages also. Or even if the bondages will come, there will not be any feeling of any bondage because there's nothing mine. Those who are yogya will definitely be free from bondage. Being yogi means to be free from bondage or the attraction of the body. And that is how you can be yogi all the time. When you have become free from the bondage of your body, you become free from all bondages. If you think of it, all the bondages are connected to the body. Whatever bondages come in my way, of becoming Baba's mirror, these bondages come with the body. So if I am free from the bondage of the attraction of this body, then I will be automatically free from all the other bondages. That's what Baba is trying to say. Baba goes on and says, so to surrender, means to be constantly yogi and to be free from the bondages. That is when you can consider yourself as the actor on the world stage who's there to reveal Baba. Always keep the sign with you. If someone still has bondages, he cannot be said to be yogi. It doesn't mean bondages will not come. They'll come, but you will be able to get free from them easily. And sometimes there's some seva and then you say, oh, okay, we will see. I don't know whether I'll have time or not. I have work. I have this. I have that. So those are all bondages. Baba says, if you are constantly yogi, you'll automatically find a way to be free from that bondage. You will be attentive and you will be accurate. That is what Baba means here. Baba goes on. So always keep this sign with you, huh? that I am free from bondage and I am constantly in Baba's yard. You will get... Subtle, subtle signs, okay, that Maya is influencing. The first sign that Maya is influencing me will be that I will not want to sit in yoga or I will not be able to sit in yoga. The second sign will be that my mind will not be stable while listening to the Murli. It will go here and there. These are two very, very basic signs that Maya is influencing. And the third sign would be excuses will start coming in. Today I should not go. I am not feeling well. I will read the Murli at home. Same thing comes in the Murli every day. So I am creating bondages for myself. And I'll get so entangled if I don't be attentive at that time that this is Maya's influence, that then I will start getting into different, different bondages. So Baba has given one thing to be yogi and free from all bondages. He says, just remove the consciousness of mind or anything that is attached to the body. Baba says, if someone has bondages, he cannot be said to be yogi. Simple. The sign of those who are yogi is that their every thought and every action is yogi. Not even a single action is not yogi. You can either be yogi or you can either not be yogi. That's it. Because they have imbibed all the yuktis that they have received, they will be yukti yukt as well as yogi yukt. Such beautiful words to be underlined. Again, 
the power to accumulate and the power to overcome Baba is talking about. Such beautifully Baba explains these small, small things, goes in such depth and such subtlety that you realize. See, Baba says, because they have imbibed all the yuktis. Now, how will you imbibe all the yuktis? Only when you have the power to accumulate. You would have imbibed all these yuktis that Baba keeps talking about in your intellect, accumulated them. Only then you can be yogi yukt. When you are yukti yukt, then you are yogi yukt. And when you are yogi yukt, you will be free from all bondages, which means you will have the power to overcome. So two signs, yukti yukt and yogi yukt. Do you understand their signs? All of you would have experienced being yukti yukta and yogi yukta. Through this, you can understand what stage you yourself have reached. And this is why you were told that you need to take back both with you, both the powers of accumulating and overcoming. So see how beautifully Baba has linked all that he has said to the power of accumulating and overcoming. Now Baba is saying, what was the result that Baba saw? Did you receive a certificate? What is the result of the Bhatti? Let's also check. Did you receive a certificate? The first certificate, you have to claim the certificate of keeping yourself satisfied. First of all, am I satisfied with my Purushat? Or am I also complaining, no, I'm not able to do this, I should be doing that, I should be sitting more in yoga. Am I satisfied? That's a certificate that I have to give to myself. Secondly, that of satisfying everyone else, that's also a certificate. If I will be satisfied with myself, everyone else will automatically be satisfied with me. Because I'll have pure intentions. My intentions will be completely pure. Thirdly, of surrendering yourself completely. These are the three certificates that Baba talks about. Claiming the certificate of keeping yourself satisfied. Then keeping others satisfied, everyone else. And thirdly, of surrendering yourself completely. Body consciousness of mind is not there. To surrender does not mean that you come and sit down in Abu. No, when Baba talks about surrender, it doesn't mean you become uh, a surrendered soul, no. So you also have to claim the certificate of surrendering yourself. Fourthly, you, you have to claim the certificate of accumulating all the yuktis of knowledge that you have received. Accumulating everything that I have received from Baba. Has, have I been able to accumulate in the intellect or I keep forgetting it and then I remember when the action is done. That is the certificate. The certificate is that whenever something comes up, I'm able to utilize that yukti. So claim that certificate. So four certificates Baba spoken of. Spoken of. You must claim these four certificates from your teacher before you go. Huh? <laughs> That's a certificate of, from this party. This group has a hundred marks in some aspects. In which aspects? To be innocent in your efforts. You have hundred marks. On the, on the one hand, to be innocent in your effort can be carelessness. But it is also a special virtue. Uh, Baba says, 
he's not talking about being careless in the efforts. No, he's talking about being innocent in the efforts. And you're innocent. You don't use your own mind. Now, whatever your parent tells you, you do. That is innocence. The fact is that all of you have an intense desire to bring transformation in yourself. And therefore, Bab Dada still has hope in this group. However, when will you be able to fulfill this hope? the hope of bringing about the transformation. When you constantly do everything with great humility, that's the transformation. When you constantly, see here the constantly word is very important. When you constantly do everything with great humility, that is when you're able to fulfill this hope. Sada Kalyan Kari is Baba's word. Your quality souls in which there is still hope. But if you imbibe the qualities you have been given, you will become a practical proof. So right now we have the potential. Baba is seeing that potential. And then Baba is saying, if you are able to imbibe the, these qualities which we just spoke of, then you will become a practical proof. From potential, it will convert into actual. Do you understand? It is good to hear the music and secrets of knowledge. But what do you have to do now? You have to become Razyut. Razyut means the one who understands the secrets of everything. Now, whatever is happening in front of me, instead of looking at it on the face value, we look at it from the lens of the secrets. Everything that is happening in the drama has a secret behind it. There's nothing that happens without a reason. So become Rasya. You have good yoga, but you now have to become yogi. Baba said constantly yogi. And he also defined what he means by being yogi. You have the desire to be free from all bondages. But first of all, you have to break the bondage of body consciousness. So the key that Baba has given for the whole exercise is to break the bondage of body consciousness. To break the bondage of mind then you will automatically be free from all bondages. Do you understand? Now you have to try this. You have to become images of the proof and also become worthy. Have you become powerful and prosperous? Each of you has made a promise to yourself. You will definitely accumulate power to fulfill the promise that you have made. The promise of becoming powerful and prosperous. No matter how much you have to tolerate or how much opposition you have to face, you definitely have to fulfill this promise. Don't get weak. No matter how much you have to tolerate, how much opposition you have to face, internal opposition, Maya's opposition, Lokik opposition. But I have to become powerful and prosperous. Whatever Baba has come to give, I have to take everything, not even leave a single penny. Have you made such a promise? Even if the souls of the entire world collectively try to make you break your promise, you must not go back on your promise. But you will face them, become complete, and definitely show them. Power to accumulate and power to overcome. With humility. 
There is the memorial created for those who made such a promise. Achalgar. Achalgar is in Madhuban. Those who might have gone might have seen Achalgar. It is a, Baba says it is a memorial of you because Achal means somebody who doesn't go haywire, constant. It's the sign of uh, Angad, you know, whom nobody could remove. So constantly remember that as our own memorial. So we have to become a children. This is not easy. Is it not? Baba saying this is easy, is it not? Baba saying it's so easy. By remembering the physical symbols, you will remember the intoxication and your target. By remembering these symbols, or what have symbolized our efforts, like Achalgar, you will be intoxicated and you will have a target in front of you. You must definitely consider yourselves to be special souls selected out of the entire world. Huh? We are special souls. Who gets up? early in the morning to do this kind of study. Nobody does. We are special. To the extent that a soul is special, accordingly, there is speciality in each action that a soul does. You are special souls, are you not? You are no less. All Madhuban residents have to show themselves to practically be special souls and glorify the name of this group. You have to keep the aim of talking about it less, but demonstrate by putting it into practice. Less words and more action. People will see the speciality in this group. When you go on to the stage, play such a part that everyone says once more. Do you understand? Your instrument teacher should invite your group again and again. And the groups have to be examples to show everyone. When someone performs good actions, that soul is remembered again and again. Underline, when someone performs good action on this stage of the world drama, that soul is remembered again and again. So this group should also show such wonders. That is Baba's hope. So we will stay in a minute or two minutes of silence. And then we will start our journey. Okay. Would somebody want to share their journey or their thoughts? I'm Shanti, sister. I would like to take a lot of exercises to check myself with these six words that Baba said. Six to eight words that Baba said. First is, do I have the power of accumulation? Next, the power of fighting. Then, am I accurate as an actor? Then, do I have? Am I satisfied with myself? Or am I able to satisfy others? 
Yes, there are six things, and there are a couple of two more words uh, Baba said. I mean, the other quality of the actor, and two more uh, qualities, uh, certificates that people who had come for the bhakti are taking home. I'll read back again and, and try to introspect on that. These were salient points that Baba said today. I think um, I, I could get all these. Thank you. Om Shanti. Om Shanti, sister. Om Shanti. Om Shanti. You know, I was just trying to link. And as you read, I just saw the various paragraphs. And I used to think, you know, the way of introducing paragraph Baba's idea is to put a point. If you see now, I, I am on the world stage. Baba is telling me everyone is looking at me. So first thing I have to remember, I am on the world stage. And Baba has already given me two blessings. So remember, when I'm going on the stage, he's saying, you're full of power. And may you be full of power and may you affect. So I have got that blessing already with me. And now he is telling, what's the aim? Reveal Baba in whatever I do, in whatever action I do, in my vision, like a mirror, when, when I see, like a mirror I should be, and I should reveal Baba, not what I speak, but in my action. And for that, he's saying now, accumulate and overcome. The next paragraph, he just gives us the, the process. Surrender your thoughts, surrender body consciousness, be your yoke, be, um, as he said yesterday also, accurate in yoga, be free from bondages, be free from bo body attractions and all. So for that, again, he uses the word yoga, yuk, and he has given us yuktis for it, yukti yuk, and you must know the secrets of the knowledge. So he says, Raju. So powerful, power, face, overcome. So either you throw away your energy or accumulate the energy. Be economical in your thoughts means uh, eliminate waste thoughts. For that, what is one thing? I have to go inside. I have to go inside. I have to go within me. I have to learn how to absorb it. And then I have to connect to that one. I was just trying to bring the Murli to a few points. Om Shanti. Om Shanti. Uh, sister, am I audible? Yes, yes, sister. Uh, sister, I just wanted to uh, clarify uh, about the power of, to accumulate that Baba has mentioned. Uh, is it to is it the same thing? Uh, when we say that uh, one has become an embod uh, embodiment of authority of all the treasures. So from dawn to dusk, whatever uh, Baba wants us to do and the way he wants us to do, uh, when I keep practicing them and make it my own natural nature, that is uh, what power to accumulate uh, means, becoming an authority of, uh, of, of everything, all the treasures or all the instructions that Baba has given us? Would somebody want to answer Rachna's sister? With your thoughts, her question is, is the power to accumulate same as being an authority on whatever Baba has said? Um, I can just try, sister. Take, for example, I need to accumulate tolerance in me. Now, if I tolerate, I think that path, I think, oh, it's just a burden. Then whatever, I will not be able to tolerate it at all. So to accumulate the power of tolerance, I have to have a blessing of being cheerful. So anything which I have to accumulate it over here, first, as she said rightly, yes, I have to practice it. I have to absorb it as a virtue. See, when you want to accumulate anything, samana, you know, bringing things together, you have to see all the waste or anything of it is removed from it. Then it becomes a good 
thing for me to hold it. So the more and more I accumulate tomorrow, when I have to tolerate something greater, I will. I would have had the power because all the waste of what is not tolerance will go off and what is goes for tolerance comes in, cheerful and all. I think that same logic way of what we think of accumulating is what we have to do. For that, you have to know to face whatever things are going to attack my tolerance. A balance I have to maintain. I think uh, I, I just tried in explaining it. Very nicely explained, Kirisha sister. Anybody else would also want to try? I'm Shanti sister. Um, in my experience, the power to have recollection of memories, like as we are doing a logic examination or studies, we tend to have the practical experiences of whatever we have done. And sooner or later, like during the final examination, we tend to accumulate all these memories and experiences and put it out uh, at the time of examination. Call it the power of memory, recall, all these subtle things which are subconsciously there within us and coming out to face a problem. So that is accumulation. That is what I can associate myself with. Very nice perspective, brother. So I think uh, power to accumulate and being an authority. See, power to accumulate, if we take virtues, like Gereja's sister was explaining, if, if I take virtues, it, the power to in, accumulate is imbibing those. And, you know, as Baba also mentioned in the movie, to accumulate all that is important and to let go all that is not important is the power to accumulate. Like Baba sometimes gives an example of you are a hunts, right? You're a holy swan. Just take what is required and leave everything else. So when Baba says something, accumulate that. And being a power of authority or being authority is a sign that I have power to accumulate and I have accumulated what, what knowledge jewels, the powers, the virtues, the sanskars that Baba has given me. I have taken from him and I have accumulated. Being authority is a sign of that. When you again and again show practical proof of those jewels that you've imbibed from Baba, then you become an authority. So becoming an authority is a signal or a sign, a practical proof that you have the power to accumulate and you've utilized it over a period of time, time and time again. Because when being, a, being an authority is a very big thing. You become an authority when you use something again and again, constantly, and you, it's like you know it at the back of your hand, right? So that is power, uh, power to accumulate. But yes, power to accumulate would lead to your becoming an authority. That's that's my understanding. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sister. Just to put it in a sentence, accumulation leads to abundance. Abundance leads to my donation, a giver power. And then, of course, I become an authority. Absolutely. Any, anything else? Anyone? So Baba has very, very beautifully explained the power to accumulate and power to overcome. And he, as Sister Giruja was also mentioning, he's, he's gone step by step, one level deeper, like the layers, or he has opened up all the layers of this power to accumulate and power to overcome. What, it's, what it exactly means, right? 
my suggestion is to read this again because this is a very, very uh, impactful and important Murli. How we can be free from bondage, what I need to do, what are the steps I need to take to, to accumulate powers of accumulation and to overcome. To overcome doesn't, Baba also has explained that to overcome doesn't mean to fight it or to confront, no. To overcome, you will automatically be able to overcome if you're accumulating. That's also what Baba said when he said that you become Rasyuk, you become Yogyuk. That is that I have accumulated. And then you will become free from bondage. That is that you will automatically overcome without effortlessly. If you, are, you have the power to accumulate, you will effortlessly overcome. Zero effort uh, it'll take. So one suggestion, go through the Murli once again, uh, read it during the day whenever you get time and related to your own Purushat. Okay. How, what are the signs that I need to see? What are the things that, uh, the waste thoughts that come in my way? And, uh, you know, where can I use that power to accumulate? And what are the bondages that I still feel? What and where do I need to move from here? You know, have that discussion with yourself. Om Shanti, sister. Uh, good morning, everyone. Very beautiful, Murli. And uh, I like the point where my Baba says that the souls who use less words and perform more actions, and the, no, not only more actions, but the actions performed very well, they are played, uh, they are uh, remembered again and again. Om Shanti. Yeah. In fact, the, the first one in this is Baba himself. The actions that he performs at this small Sangam you just for 100 years out of 5,000 years, they are remembered for 2,500 years. That's the impact of uh, good actions. People remember them. Thanks for picking it up. Okay, I think we will go on to a meditation. We'll do a quick meditation before we move on. Yes, so let's bring Baba. Yeah, my sister. You want me to play this uh, music? Yeah, if you can. Our uh, silence is also okay, no problem. Okay, then we'll keep a silence. Yeah. Okay, so let's bring Baba in his avyat form in front of us. Visualize Baba sitting in front of us. In his beautiful and object form. Both Bab and Dada. Smiling. And visualize yourself also as an Avya of the angel. I feel a special connect with Bab Dada. While taking Krishti. From Bab Dada. I'm able to experience immense power.
I know inside that both the souls, Shiv Baba, the Supreme Soul, and Brahma Baba, the first soul, both are inside this embodiment. I can feel the rays of love and power coming from this beautiful eyes. which helped me see through both these souls together. I experienced the love of a mother. And the blessings of a Sadhguru. I can see Bab Dada looking at me. At this beautiful angel in its final form. In the Soviet form. There are no thoughts of bondages. I'm free. I'm free from all responsibilities, all weaknesses, all waste. and all bondages. And this experience of being free from everything makes me feel very, very light. I don't need to connect with Baba. It is a constant connection automatically. This is my final stage. This is my final form. This is the result of all the efforts that I have made. I now realize and fully understand that I'm a special soul. With this understanding and with the power and love that I'm receiving from Bab Dada, I'm ready to go on to the world stage and perform my part I promise 
not to forget this experience and to remain constantly in this awareness that I'm different. And I'm just performing my part. Thank you, Baba, for putting that faith in me, trusting me, and blessing me. Om Shanti. Om Shanti. It was full on Dharna Yukmoli with lots of checking points for me to practice. Thank you, Shivani Ben, and thank you, Divine Family, for joining us. See you tomorrow at 5 a.m. Till that time, have a wonderful day. Om Shanti. Thank you, sister.